What is going on guys, DBG here, and in this video we are going to be talking about my journey in the 250k qualifiers. From not even playing, like I was doing a watch party stream, like literally, I was doing a watch party stream, I had no interest in playing, and my chat all started spamming me, play, play, play. So I was just like, you know what, I don't even have a team. Like this was my team. I ran Bonga, Sabonis, and Granger off the bench. And basically, Bongo only came in if I came up against, like, if I um, came up against, like, a Simmons or something. I started off with Petrie, Rudy Fernandez, Scalabrini started, Antoine Jameson at the four, and Dino Raja at the five. So I didn't even have a team. Like, this team total costs 100k. Actually, no, sorry, Granger exists. So about 200k. And I didn't even play Granger that much. I did not even play Granger that much, so... If I had to replace Granger with an Eddie Jones or even a Jack Marin, this team is literally like a 100k team right now. So I just said, you know what, I'm going to play for fun. So we got about... We were so far down. Like, my first game was against a dude who was awful. And we had like... Actually, I I'm not going to say he's awful. He was alright. The only problem was is I just have such a bad memory in that game because we had clashing jersey colours. He, I had to change my jerseys mid-game. But, like, I didn't even play... I didn't even enter my first game until, like, four minutes in. I was using Ryan Sanders as a coach because I forgot to put on Frank Vogel. Um, just anything that could have gone wrong. We had to change our jerseys because the jerseys that we were using clashed too much. I can't remember what jersey it was, but it was basically... It was just clashing. It would be, like, the equivalent of me deciding to wear the one white away kit in the game. And, like, being shocked the jerseys were clashing. But, um, yeah, someone was clashing with... Someone had, like, a navy home kit and it clashed completely. At least it was a little bit of different color in this one, so it didn't clash. So, yeah. From looking at the tournament, we finished in 65th place. Not terrible, considering the team we had. But now, let's show from... At this stage, we're in, like, 170th or something. We have already played, like, four games at this stage when we started off. So, we're in about, like, 170th, I reckon. Let's turn down the volume. So, we're playing against this dude. His team is... I mean, it's really bad. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, this guy's team was shockingly bad. So, my like, my first, basically, I started recording because I played one of the best, most fun games of 2K ever. I, it was against a viewer. He was in the stream, but it was the most fun game of 2K I ever had because, basically, I didn't care. I was not sweating. Like, it might look like I'm full core pressing. I just naturally do that. Like, I, I'm just playing the way I naturally play. Like, I'm still trying to win. Like, straight up. I'm not going to... I'm not going to play the game and just take the piss and, like, not try to win. But, like, I was not sweating. I was literally, half the time I wasn't even watching the game, I was reading chat. But I actually didn't play that badly today. But we just completely just blitzed this guy. Like, his team was weak. His best player was Pink Diamond Marvin. So this was a game you knew you won. This is one of those games you knew you won. But the first game, again, was against, like, Ben Simmons, a few other guys. Like, his team was decent. And he was a stick shooter as well. And stick shooting is kind of back with the new patch. So he was just kind of a little bit difficult to guard. Then the game right before this was the most fun game because again we weren't trying that hard, but we played against like an insanely good team. Like I'm pretty sure the guy had a lot of really high overall players, and basically we managed to beat him, and it was neck and neck the entire way. I think the guy had like Peyton and stuff on his team, but then last possession of the game, he's up by two points, and he goes to ice it. We turn fouling off. I think it's game over. He goes to ice it. I don't have footage of this, which is the worst thing. He goes for the layup. Dino Raja from nowhere. Swats the dude. Like I'm talking because this game is irrelevant. Swats the dude. I come down, drive to the basket, and instead of tying the game... Actually, no, sorry, I'm down one. He goes to try and make a three-point game to make sure I can't win. And instead of going for the win, his whole team collapses. We kick it out to guess who? The chicken man right here, Antoine Jameson, who hits a massive white. It was our first white of that entire game. But the dude we were playing had, like, the best, one of the best squads in the game. And that was when I was like, you know what? I actually had fun not taking it seriously. Bongo was out there destroying him. Um, Petrie, I think, had, like, nearly 30. And then, obviously, Chicken Man was being chicken, doing Chicken Man things. And, yeah, so this game right here, obviously, we're, like, we're 32 to 6 up. Like, this was a pretty, pretty bad one. But there's worse. There's worse games than a 32 to 6. I can't lie. If there are worse games than me going 32 to six up. So right now, like, as you guys can see, we're way behind. We're like in 70th. 
be, even with a massive lead because I like I wasn't even trying to well I was sorry I was trying I wasn't trying to sweat and get games off early with and um, but this guy here he had way the cam reddish this game I found easy because he had all times had one player on the court that he wasn't comfortable shooting with he just runs away from Scalabrini there we go on full bar which is very very annoying but Scalabrini I think one of my games it was the game that I won with Jameson on the buzzer I was just like I don't care win or lose and all the chat was like, oh, you're sweating. So I was like, okay, I'm putting Scalabrini in. For the, I'm running everything through. Like, Scalabrini scored like nearly all my last points. But um, yeah, this guy right here, he had big O in the game. And we started running with Bonga to guard him. We rotated Bonga. It all depends on the game, whether we round Bonga. Like, I still don't have range on my Bonga, by the way. Like, I legitimately still do not have range on my Bonga. So uh, if you guys are wondering if Bonga is some, like, god-tier range player, I still don't have range on him. I have not I have not touched my bonga. Like it's an off rip bonga. And I have not touched the Scalabrini either. Scalabrini still does not a quick first step. As I think that was a lag spike, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure. But he goes and catches that one there. And makes the big three-pointer. So Scalabrini there. We now have a 16 to 7 lead. He's out here launching along, which is not too bad, but a good dunk there by Bobby Jones. But like this game, I was I played well enough. Like again, this guy had a decent enough team. Like he has weight, he has some players. But like again, I just feel he, at all stages in the game, he had either like Embry or Shaq on the floor. And I just hard off balling them. Like that is a bit of a problem when not running. Um, some guys can shoot it. That is the dumbest thing ever. What the hell was he doing cutting? That just kind of sums up why I don't like Grand Gen. And there was a game. This was the game here. I started getting really angry at the game. Stuff like that started again. I was about to I was about to quit the game when I was up like 16 points. Chat convinced me to stay in the game and to stay playing, which fair enough, I did. But like. Man, I was in a bat. Like, I think this guy was in chat as well. He said he played till 20. And I was just like, to him, I was like, look, you're probably not going to win. So at this stage, we are in 60th place. We're absolutely, you know, like, we were like 400 off at the very start. So we were actually keeping up pace with the best of them. And like, we were the same amount away from fourth place for like quite a while. So like, we were keeping up pace. And I reckon, had we not come up against the player that we came up against, we would have been fine. But the guy, the dude we came up against, pretty good. Can't lie. Um, later on. So, basically, this game right here. This, I'm looking at this team being like, this is one of the worst teams I have I've played against. So, normally against, I press these guys. But, no, but I decided in this game, you know what, I'm going to zone. At this stage, I had Glenn Robinson and Dentist in my squad. I don't think I played Glenn Robinson or Dentist at all in this entire run. For like, I played him for like a few games and I took them out of my squad. But like we're nine two up against this guy to start the game, and like I won't like it got to the stage where I was literally I had my mic plugged in and was like, "Can you please quit? You you don't stand a chance. Can you please quit in this game?" But it actually worked out for the best that he didn't quit. I can't lie, it probably worked out for the best. I would have rather him quit in the second quarter. That would have been the most ideal situation, but it actually was probably better that he didn't quit because we got a big lead. Like. As you guys can see here, three minutes to go, we're up by 73 points. We scored 93. We score a lot more in these last three minutes. Let me just say that much. I guess soon, I think we get takeover with, I was saying, we get takeover Granger at this stage. And because he's got that half range with take, we uh, managed to get team take using Showtime. For the first time in my life, we got basically team take on Showtime. And then we slowed him down there, which was a little bit annoying with that foul. But Granger absolutely just dominate. But then again, this is just a flawed system. Like, this is an absolute flawed system. He's so focused on rage quits. And like, I'm literally up 96 to 22. And I can't do anything. He actually scores a lot of points to end this game. I can't lie. I thought at one stage he wasn't going to score. But like, he scores another 8 point Or he scores another 10 points. But like, we are up 116 to 30. 116 to 30. 15 for Dino. 42. Make that 45 points for Rudy Fernandez. 119. And you know what? It's not over. He goes and we all fell, which is dumb. But, 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 that gives me time to uh, take another shot. So, he knocks in the first free throw with PG. He knocks down the second free throw with PG. And then we managed to get the ball into Rudy Fernandez. 
and Rudy Fernandez goes and goes right to the basket. Kicks to Danny Granger, 122 to 32. We won by 90 points. 90. But we got 350, which is like three quick game, which is like three quick rage quits, so I'm fine with that. Now we play against this guy. This team's weak as well. Like, can't lie. The guy's got Ruby and B, Lamarcus Aldridge. This team's weak. He scored, like, he gets an all right start, I guess. But at this stage, we've gotten used to the players' releases. Like, if I hadn't, like, if I wasn't playing current gen, obviously, would have turned meter off by now because I was a little bit more used to my players. But there's no point playing meter off because I'm playing all year meter on, honestly. Big block there by Dina Aracha. We're on the floor. It's Rudy Fernandez who leave wide open again. Who hits another big white. So Rudy Fernandez here. Just killing it. He started carrying. Like, he was the reason I got rid of Dentist. I was playing Rudy Fernandez every minute of every game. I, agree. I didn't sub off Rudy Fernandez. I would sub off Dino for Sabonis. I'd sub off. I'd rotate my point guards. And I'd occasionally sub on Danny Granger for Scalabrini. Scal started basically every game though. Thankfully, this guy left first quarter, 16-7. So we're on some run right now. Like, we went from being nothing. We went from being, like, so far down. We were in, like, the 500 range at one stage. Because I wasn't even that focused. And I get this stage, I'm still not focused. But I'm playing well. Like, I'm objectively, I'm playing well. So we're 23rd. Like, we are only 160 points off top. So this dude here was a subscriber. He actually got on the mic. And I didn't know what he was saying. He didn't know it was me. He just had his mic accidentally turned on. And I get on I get on the mic and I can literally hear my own voice. He ended up quitting because he had just started and he was like, it was his very first game. So he ended up quitting. Thank you to him. Huge, huge shout out to him. Um, good guy. We got to talk for a couple of seconds. And yeah, I definitely, remind me, I will play against you. You wanted to play against me. I will definitely play against you. And a huge shout out to you for quitting on me in that game and just letting me uh, go on. But as you guys can see, I'm Vardo. The ESL European champion. The European play now champion from last year. Seen by most as the best my team player in Europe. And we hit him with a dot to start the game. That's a, a rotate. Like that is an anti-rotation shot. Like that is a pass that no, like the bait defenses can't. They can't do anything about it because they got to cover the player coming up and then the other player slides down to the corner. But this guy, obviously, he's looking. He's not even looking to play. He's looking to compete. This guy is looking to compete in this tournament. I guess if any if any Europeans are to go past the first or second round, it's going to be this guy. So we then go and I should have dotted corner again. The corner was open for Jameson. So we're down 6-3 right here. We have a great slip, but for some reason... The game just doesn't register my button presses properly, which is very annoying. So we have to put up the shot there with Rudy Fernandez. And we go and fail to stop the break. So, like, I'm locked in at this stage. Like, if there's a game that I'm trying, it's this game. Like, I'm, I'm telling you right now, like, it was all fun and games until this game right here. I was, I was locked. I was absolutely locked. And he gets bailed. He makes a horrible, horrible drive right there and gets bailed. And one thing I will say, like, this guy is a really, really good player. He's very, very reliant I don't know, I again, I'm not going to say he's reliant on it, but it's, I don't know how he's going to react if someone can stop his pick and roll. Like, I'm not a very good defender. I don't know my rotations well enough, but um, he's a smart player. He actually read, he read a few of the things that I was doing, and he outsmarted me on a few possessions. So I got to give credit where credit's due. As we managed to throw a dot right there into the corner, that same play we ran to start the game. That was open almost all the time. And in fairness, in the second quarter, he really adapted to cover that play. Like, that was really how I was getting my shots. But he's like, I'm not that great at this game. I don't really know the game that well. Like, I'll be the first to say it. Like, I'm not that good. Like, I don't... Pl I played this game once. I played JD on Sunday. I've played this TTO. And that's all I've played in this game since then. We make a bad... Re we make a good read. Bad rotation. He shoots a bad shot. Big board there by Dino Raja. So Dino, who I decide for some reason to take the ball up with, which is not the smartest decision in the world. But again, he's kind of baiting weird positions. He leaves the basket wide open. I should have dotted Jameson, but you know what? It's better to take the two points and risk the three and turn the ball over. I will say he got into a lot of sweet spots that I didn't expect later on in the game. Like he really got into a lot of sweet spots. Like you can tell that he's someone that plays this game a lot. That's not a good, that was not a good look. But you can tell that he's someone that plays the game a lot, whereas I'm not. There was a lot of defensive positions he got into. Like, he got a lot of steals later in the game because I thought I was open and he just happened to get into the sweet spots. Spots that I, spots on the floor that I don't know anymore because I'm a little bit out of practice in terms of playing this game competitively. And again, like, 
I don't have any defensive... I didn't even use defensive settings, I'm pretty sure, in this game. So I have no idea how the guard does pick and roll quick stops. Like, I wasn't very good at it last year. I'm... Like, if you guys know, my current gen tactic at one stage was twice the offense, half the defense. So I've got no idea how to play defense in this game. And my offense is no longer good because I'm not playing the game. So at this stage, like, I'm just trying whatever the hell I can. I'm trying whatever the hell I can to stop him. And like, I'm, I will let him. I will let him. He goes and mistimes that one, thankfully. And Dino, like, Dino is our savior. But we were, I'm going to let him take twos. Like, that was my tactic is I'm going to let the guy take twos. So that was the bait, most baited pass I could have thrown. Like, we got a lucky three points right there to take the lead. So we're doing all right. Like, we got our budget squad out here. He's got his demon squad. And we give up that um, layup right there. I should have been able to get the block there. But one thing that I'm happy I didn't do. Like, I crossed the halfway line every time. Like, most people in this situation would have, especially when you're me, who's not that experienced, would have really buckled under his press. And there's a reason why he qualified. Because he is very, very good at picking off those, like, stereotypical bad player, loopy, long passes. And I felt like I did a good job in general of playing, especially at the start of the game, playing at my pace. Like, that is a dumb shot right there from Dino. It worked out, though. We got the ball to Scalabrini, who goes and posts up. Should have been it should have been an on one right there, or a layup. And that was, again, a really, really smart play by me. So I played a really good first quarter. Like, he's, neither of us have put a foot wrong at this stage. I think I had the one player where I missed a shot with Rudy Fernandez um, because my icons, because I accidentally brought up an, a menu. But it became close, so I don't know what I did there on defense. But that's just bad right there. I think I was expecting him to go out. So we bring on Bonga at this stage. And Bonga against this guy is not as much of a threat as Petri because Petri spaces the floor a bit better. Like, I'm holding L2. I know he's trying to cut me off. And he's at this stage reading my passes. I should have went to Granger. That was a wide open pass for a wide open shot by Granger. I turn it over. That's just me being bad. Like, he's not in a sweet spot there. That's just me being bad. He was starting to read me a little bit. And it was one of those games where because of my defense, I couldn't chase the game. I couldn't get a stop against this guy. There was not going to be a momentum. I did not know how to rotate my players. So if he got any sort of a lead, it was GG's. And by lead, I mean like if his lead went to 10, it was GG's. As well as that, he was in second place on the rankings. So I told him, like, I literally messaged him before the game. I was like, look, you go up by 10 and I quit. And that is kind of what happened. So we're, we're down by five here. We hit Danny Granger. And I hit the wrong player. I pressed triangle. And I want Sabonis to cut hard. Because if Sabonis cuts hard, we're good. Like, we have a basket if Sabonis cuts hard. We go and dot Danny Granger. We then get a we get caught with the um, glitch where your player doesn't shoot. It would have been a contest, but I was confident in hitting that with Granger. And he comes right down. He posts me up. Bonga misses the easiest steal in history. And LeBron gets a layup that he should have been blocked on. So at this stage, I'm down seven. It's going to be a tough one. He, we, he gets a steal. He gets a three. So we went and quit the game. So in the end, as you guys can see, something really, really weird happened. So this is the last scoring. So I'm Vardo. It's 3,400. The dude who I just played. Um, he's 3-4-2-6. And this dude here, our Xavier, is 3-1-80. I won by 90 points and got um, 300 and like 30 points. So for winning by 90, you get 330. So like obviously four hours, you're getting like a thousand points an hour. Like if you win by 90, you're getting 330. Like you're basically having to win every game on average by like 50 or get a bunch of quits. So this dude here. 3180, so he's 40 points off fourth. And then watch what happens. And this is at the end. The dude gets like 600 points. Or like 500 and something. The dude won by like 170 points, apparently. So he seems to have won by 170 points. A bit fishy there. But obviously, 2K will have a look into it. Maybe he did win by 170. Maybe he is just that much of a demon. But. A bit fishy. So, when it officially ended, Vardo was number one. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna always say, I will say, I lost to that number one player. I will say, I lost to the number one player because Vardo was tough. Vardo was tough. Like, there's a reason why he is the, well, he was the European champion at playing there last year. So anyway, yeah, that's the video. That is officially the last time I play current gen, not for, um, not for content. Like, I'll occasionally play a game if it's for a video. And to be fair, stream, 
maybe consider content. But I think I played all right. I played all right. Like, had I not come up against I'm Vardo and I dodged like the two or three comp European players that were still in at this stage, I think I could have maybe, I could have, not maybe, I could have got without questioning on top 10. If I got a couple of easy games in a row, I might have got top 10. But sure, look, it is what it is. Like, it's a flawed qualifying system. Um, like, look, I'm not good. I'm not good enough to be. I'm not in the top 32 players in the world. I don't play the game. The fact that I finished 65th in this, um, despite being pressured into playing last second by my... But literally, I was doing a watch party. And I was like, oh, yeah. I was joking around being like, I'm playing because I didn't want to uh, people to leave my stream. And then people were like, oh, just play for fun. Just play for fun. And then it turns out that we had some of the most fun games because I didn't care. We had some massive games, big moments by Chicken Man, Antoine Jameson himself. And then we got to play... And we were competitive for half a game. Like, we were competitive for quite a while with Vardo. It's just... And I'm not even going to say it's the players, because it's not the players. Like, if you watch that game... Like, yeah, he did have the better players. There's no... There's no question about that. That Vardo's team is a lot better than mine. But, like, if you watch the game, it was his rotations more than his players. Like, I think... If you give me Vardo's team, I don't play that much better. And Vardo still beats me. However, if we swap teams, I think I win. Because I'm just better with these these type of players than most people are with these type of players but if you give me all the best cards in the game i still don't think i beat the dude so um yeah that's pretty much it congratulations to vardo v stuff nick shoots those oh sorry who ended up who were the top four in the end congratulations to we're yet to see on our xavier i'm not gonna i'm not gonna accuse him of anything on a video but there have been accusations as well as that fight, that like 170 point win point jump. Something seems fishy with that. But if it's legit, congratulations for winning the qualifier and getting the number one seed. Um, Vardo, congratulations for not only getting the number one seed, for beating the budget gods. Congratulations for to V Stuff. No one has any idea who he is. Philly made Pep. Apparently he's a stage god. Congrats. And if it does turn out that somebody else qualifies like a fifth or sixth place, Congratulations to all the top 10 and the players that did make it quite far. Also, a huge congratulations on the Xbox side to Carlo, the people's champ. The guy was in third place and he got stalled three games in a row in front of like a, nearly a thousand people. And not even nearly a thousand people. I had 2,000 people on my stream cheering him on. The people's champ, Carlo221. Um, you may have you may have lost the battle by finishing eighth place because you got stalled, but you but you won the hearts of many a 2K viewer today. So anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.